Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to today's live watercolor session. Uh, my name is Sarah Giese, and I'm an artist and a mom and a wife. And um, we decided to make these videos teaching everybody a little bit of watercolor technique, spending an hour together, um, making something beautiful in the midst of chaos in the world. Um, yeah, we decided, kind of decided, we need to put some world, some beauty in the world right now. <laughs> so we did this, here we are. My 16-year-old um, son, JP, is my technician today, so we're, you know, we're, we're working it out, and if you have any problems, you t message him on Facebook there, and he will give it a whirl. He'll help us, <laughs> okay? Um, we'll be here for one hour. We're gonna have, all you need is your watercolors, your watercolor paper, and brushes today. No need for any other things, and water. Maybe a little paper towels. So, let's get started. All right, today we're gonna make a painting of this cool pokey flower called a protea. Um, it's also called a sugar bush, I've heard. Um, at first I thought it was um, an artichoke. You know, it looks kinda like an artichoke. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a South African flower. A little bit later, JP's gonna tell us about it. But um, yeah, I looked it up and I thought, oh, that's a really cool flower. Uh, so let's paint it. <laughs> Um, so, all you need is your watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, use the thickest paper you have. Um, you'll also need watercolors. So if you have some like mine, that's great. If you have liquid ones, that's great too. If you have this kind, like your kids, uh, watercolors, this works perfectly fine, okay? So what we'll need to use today is, um, we'll need a yellow, a bluish color, a dark, red or purpley color, reddish purple, green, brown, and that's it, okay? So really, if you have this many colors, you're gonna be totally satisfied with, what, with the outcome. If you only have a few colors, you might need to start mixing as we go. If it's not the right color, you can mix, mix colors to get it just right. And I would suggest having a separate piece of paper that you can test and you can work on on the side um, so that you get the colors just how you want them, okay? Um, today, like I said, we're gonna use brushes. We're not gonna use any markers or um, paint pens today but we will need a, a small brush. So if you have a, a, a very small, fine-tipped brush, that's gonna do you well. That's gonna serve you well today. If you don't have a small brush, look for your brush that has the, the finest tip. You should be able to do the job with a tiny, fine, fine tip, okay? So as we get started, you'll need to look at your outline the outline is in the comments below the video here. Um, print it out on your copier or um, freehand draw it. There's lots of different ways you can get this image onto your watercolor paper, okay? Freehand with this one, um, obviously it's got a lot of little details, but um, I'm not gonna go through the whole outline, but what you, but what you really need to do is look for the shapes there's a circle in the middle, and there's a lot of little triangles poking up toward the top of that circle. That's really what you're gonna look for, okay? The leaves are all, you know, self-explanatory, and um, this one is just another, like a teardrop shape with pokey, pokey triangles up that way. So, you can do it. If you would like to make your own, with your own mind's eye, Look at the painting, look at the outline, and think about how would I make this look exactly how I want it to be. Um, I love when you do that because that means that you're using your brain and your brain is translating those shapes through your hand and you're making it your own. I love that. But it doesn't necessarily need to happen. You can use this outline, especially for this one. It's, very, um, it's more ornate than what we um, usually have been doing. Okay. So before we put paint on this one, let's look at the painting here, make sure we got it. 
settled in. So we're going to use brown in the middle here first. We'll just do a, um, a brown with darker down inside where the petals go in, just like the last few times. We're always going to think about where the sun would be shining or where the light is. It would be the lightest on top and darkest down in the creases, right? Um, then we'll get, we're going to go in with a light blue color and a yellow. Those are the undertones. Then once we get um, those dry, we'll add the red and it will we'll pull it down in. Okay, so the first, the first layer of paint, you'll see a very light blue color and some yellow along this area here and up a little here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first. We'll do the brown and then the... the base colors. I can um, hear myself echoing for some reason. It's, <laughs> I feel a little crazy. <laughs> um, so we're going to leave our paper dry so we have a lot of control on this one, okay? We're going to go in with a brown and down at, toward the bottom we're going to add the darker brown and let the light let the water make it lighter as we go t toward the middle. Okay, so it's darker down here, and it's going to go lighter toward the middle. There we go. And then as we go up to the top here, we're going to just use water and just pull that brown paint up here and let it be light at the top. Okay. No need to be exact. Now, one way that you could um, make this more detailed than what, we're, than what I'm doing you could go through on all those little lines and really um, color in each little section as though they were one strand, which they are. I think when I looked at it, it's kind of like these hair things that going up into the middle. So each of those is a little strand. You could go in and paint each one. That would look more detailed. Um, for time's sake, I'm just making it all brown for now. Like we always say that watercolor is going to dry lighter than what it is when it's wet. So we'll just let it dry for now and we'll have to go in for another coat to make it darker, especially down in those shadowy areas. Okay. Um, John Parker, yes. um, could you tell us, I was looking up that protea flower and it has a cool like symbolism in South Africa. Can you read that for me? We yes, the protea flower, um, the meaning of a flower is influenced largely by its historical background and the way people saw it in the past. Many stories and interesting symbolic, sim symbolic meanings have been linked to the meanings of flowers and they are something that has preserved until today. So there's several different meanings tied to the protea flower, but the one you're talking about is transformation. And it says, this meaning is linked to the blooming character of the protea flower, and it can be interpreted as a symbol of symbolic change, or as a, interpreted as a symbol of changing and becoming someone different and better. Huh. Yeah, I thought that was cool. It said something about transformation and courage and changing. I just thought, I love that. Thanks, Jape. It's also the national flower of South Africa. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I just thought, what a timely flower, right? A timely meaning for a flower. We're in a, for better or worse, we're in a time of change and transformation and courage. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool that this flower has all those meanings. And I didn't, all I thought was it's just a pretty flower. But when we went in to check it out, it has more, more meaning behind it. It's kind of cool. Michelle Whitney says, I have become inspired and realize we can all paint. You are right when, we, when you have said, it looks better when it is done. 
Yes, what exactly. What brand of brushes do you recommend as well? Oh, well, mine are Dugato. <laughs> JP, would you mind looking that up on, um, on Amazon and give a link? It's a set of, I think, 12 watercolor brushes by Dugato, D-U-G-A-T-O. And we'll just, yeah, look, at, look for an Amazon link and we can put that in the D-U-G-A-T-O. You see it? Yeah, something like that, 10 or 12 or something like that. Okay, while we're doing that, you can see I'm putting just a layer of light blue. Now, I have this blue here. If you see, look how dark that blue really is can be. See that? If it's not diluted, it's a nice bright <laughs> blue. But I don't want it to be bright blue. I just wanted it to be a hint of blue down under, underneath all those other colors. So I watered it down quite a bit. And we just put it that, putting that as a base coat down underneath. Okay. Um, we can put a little bit on this guy over here as well. It's going to be covered with other colors, but just as a as an undercoat. All right. Eight piece. That works. Does it say watercolor? Uh, yes. Okay. Well. Kind of kind of weird looking. They got weird grips. Hmm. I'll I'll keep looking. Okay. I'll put a. If you want to look in the history of our. Um, are buying <laughs> if you're oh, logged yeah. in. I can do that. They're in there. Yeah. Okay. I'll, that. I'll put a link in the. In the yeah, comments. in the comments. That would be great. Thanks, bud. Okay. Now that we have a layer of blue here, um, let's look at this area here. We see how we have all this yellow coming up from behind that middle section. So we'll just put some yellow in there, maybe a little bit down in here as well. Okay. So going in with my yellow. Now I did put blue down, so blue and yellow are going to mix and become green. Um, I don't want that necessarily, so I'm not going to mix around a whole bunch. I'm just going to let that yellow sit on top. And yes, what you said earlier, what was her name? She said, everybody can paint. Yes, everybody can paint. It's kind of one of those things where you realize, oh, there's just like a step-by-step -step process. It's not like a magic thing. It's not a magical thing. It's just a step-by-step. -step. One thing leads to another, and each little decision creates, creates that art. So yeah, I'm excited that you're feeling inspired and putting beauty in the world. There's lots of ways to do that. But this is one, this is one of those ways, right? I made friendship bread yesterday and um, brought it to my neighbors. Um, we ate some of it too. Um, and then my neighbors, they always give me, when I give them bread, they give me things. So one neighbor has um, eggs and they give them give us eggs and one the neighbor across the street he gave me some fish that he had caught and it was in his freezer and he makes sausage sometimes yeah so we're all just sharing around the things that we're putting in the world right so that's fun you want to look at it there you go okay so I have a little bit of yellow in there this is just the base coat. This is just the base colors. So just a little bit of hints of those colors shining through is gonna be what we want, okay? All right, so as we go into this flower more, what you'll see is each of these little petals, I think they're petals, they're more like, um, you know, like an artichoke. They're, I think they're hard and spiky. Um, what we were reading is that they can withstand a lot of um, dry dryness. They can withstand a, what is that called? Like a drought. a drought, yeah. 
So they, they hold their water. Anyway, so that's kind of inspiring too. They can ha withstand a drought. We can do it. <laughs> so you'll notice that these little guys, they're all outlined in that bright red color. So a dark purpley red color. So we're gonna go in and outline those with the red and I'm gonna pull from the top down into the other colors. So that'll be self-explanatory in just a minute. So I'll show you how I'm doing. I'm using my tiny brush. This is my zero, number zero um, brush. And I'm gonna go in with my, my purpley red here and get the water on there and activate it. Okay, got my brush loaded up. Where should I get started? I'm gonna do down here first. So we're gonna go along the outside edges of all this and down the middle, just like that. Outlining those pokies, okay? So before they dry completely, I want to go in and use just water and I'm going to pull that color down from the tip. Now don't worry if it doesn't, um, is no longer um, stark, We're, we can go in and fix those lines to be more straight and, and defined. But what we want is to pull that water, that color down from the tips. See how that looks kind of like a stri striated kind of a look? So pulling it down from the tip. And it doesn't need to go all the way to the bottom, but just down from the tip. So before they dry, go do, do a few, do four or five, and then pull them down. And then go, I'm gonna go back in and put more color. See how you need a, a really small tip for this one? Some of these on the outline, I didn't put the middle line. Um, the middle line really does need to be there. I just, I think, missed it as I was making the outline. So go ahead and add that in if it's not there. Okay, I'm going back in with just water and pulling that purpley red color down. And that's the technique we're going to use for this whole flower. So nothing new as we go along. <laughs> just keep doing the same thing. Let some of the color show through from the, the base color that we put down. You know, we don't want to cover that all the way up. But basically, it's going to turn a little bit purple colored or reddish, okay? Depending on the color you picked for these, this little exercise. This morning, I spent the, the morning getting together a shipment of prints of one of my favorite paintings that I've done. It's called The Tree of Life. I made that painting for a um, commission um, several years ago, and that was for... Um, Catherine Downs. Shout out to Catherine Downs. Anyway, she asked me for that painting and it's been one of our favorites, one of the favorites of most everybody. So 
for people who are my patrons, people who have gone on Patreon and signed up for the subscription to paint uh, along with me each month and then do book studies and videos and things like that. Um, they also get a free print. So I'm sending those out. So I spent the morning doing that. I'm excited to have them get their paintings in the mail. You can still mail things now, right? <laughs> That's not outlawed yet. Oh. I also spent some time out in the in the yard today and I realized that my um, there's a passion flower plant growing wildly. I don't know, maybe the um, previous owners planted it. I'm not sure, but it's growing kind of in a funny place. So um, a few years ago, it was blossoming, it was there, and um, then I, it was kind of growing up out of the middle of another bush. And I knew it was there, but I just didn't even think twice. And when I pruned that other bush, I just chopped the whole passion flower off at the root. <laughs> so it's taken several years for it to come back. Last, last two years it came back but it didn't flower and I just was out there today and it's, it's flowering. It's so cool. They are the most amazing flowers. I thought my husband was saying we should paint that flower but I already have a plan for tomorrow. So maybe we'll do it at some point. Anyway, I was, just, I was excited. It's, it finally came back. It's not dead. <laughs> I thought for sure I had killed it forever. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well... Okay. The recording of this live stream is going to be a little bit uh, odd because it's going to start <laughs> right at a now. Weird spot. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, well, guys. okay. So if you are just looking at the recording now and you're just getting started, I'm sorry about that. We had some technical technical difficulties. So um, I'm going to give you a real quick overview before we move on just because I know most of you are um, are watching not live so if you're live just go get a cup of coffee real quick I'm gonna spend a couple minutes so we're gonna get the you get you get your outline okay somehow put it on your watercolor paper we're gonna put the brown in the middle here with the darkest parts down in here and then what we did was we put a layer of blue like a light, light blue, and then a little bit of yellow coming, coming up from that middle area and some down in here as highlights, okay? And now what we're doing, once you get that done, you're gonna have to pause it and come back and, <laughs> and keep it going. I'm sorry, we had, this was not our normal. Anyway, so then we're going back in. Once this, is, this layer of blue and yellow is dry, now I'm going back in with a bluish purple color and I'm going, um, I'm tracing each little uh, pokey thing, little petal. I think they're petals, but they're, they're hard. This is a protea flower. Um, and so I'm tracing it like that. And then before they dry, maybe do four or five little petals. And once they're, before they're dry, we're going to go in just with water and pull that red down into the petal so it has kind of a straight, striated look. Okay, not all the way down because we still want to see that blue and yellow underneath. Okay, so that's all we're really doing. We're doing that little technique over and over and over. And don't worry that the lines 
once you put water on them, they aren't as stark. We'll, we'll go back in and define ones that have gotten a little bit fuzzy, okay? That's all we're doing now. So we'll put the, um, the description of the protea flower. I thought it was really cool. We'll put that description in the comments as well so you can see um, what, where it's growing and what it's about. I thought it was an artichoke when I first saw this flower and I thought, oh, this is so cool, but no, it's got its own, its own um, origin here. So, so I think you'll probably be caught up. I'm sorry that that just started so abruptly on the recording, but you know, my 16 year old is helping me today and he's doing a great job. He just had a lot of details to, to figure out. And one of them was push the record button that didn't happen until just now. So no big deal. Sorry if it's, if it's getting a little, little rushed for you. We'll just have to work with what we've got. Okay, so I'm just continuing that same technique. throughout this whole flower here. doing more than four or five. Maybe I should stop real quick and put the water on <laughs> before they dry. Just pull that pink down a little bit. I was thinking, I was talking to uh, um, one of you guys. There's a couple people that I know of painting along, who are from Australia, um, which is so cool. So one of you was telling me that the other day we painted a painting of a bunch of different colorful flowers and some of the leaves that we put in were blue and I was saying, well, it's just a little bit of a um, creative, <laughs> not natural looking flower or, or, or leaf, but she was telling me that in um, Australia there, they have blue leaves. And I looked it up, yes they do, it's so cool. There's, there's several actually, there's several leaves out there that are quite blue. That's so cool. So hi to Australia. <laughs> That's so fun, isn't it? Okay, since it's wet down here, I am gonna turn my painting around and start from this side so I don't rub my hand in the wet. So it's upside down to you and to me. Continuing up here. Now, up here I put um, some of the, the leaves were, were rounded and so I showed that on some of these top leaves, or I guess I keep calling them leaves, they're petals, but it's like right here, this is the outside of the petal and it's curving in. So I'm going to leave this part white and then bring the, the pink down inside there. That way it'll show that it's, it's a different um, part of the petal. We're all just telling a story through, through paint on a paper. Yeah. So again, right here, I'm going to just pull the water down inside and leave that white as possible. Same here, I'm going to leave that area white. Pull that down from here. Okay. Continuing on. A 
Last night we had our Zoom call with my patrons who are, we're all doing a book study. The patrons are what they call the people that do Patreon. It's like a subscription um, to be part of like a, a creative community that's online with me. Um, and we did the first chapter last night and it's deep. It's talking about um, really the things that hold us back from becoming everything we are made to be. I posted um, some of the affirmations, I guess they call them, but just some of the truths that we we need to believe rather than the lies that say that we are not creative or shouldn't try to be creative or it's wrong to want to as assert your your ideas into the world, insert your ideas into the world. Truly, we are made for that. We are made in God's image, God's creator, however you believe all of that. That's how we are made to be. It's natural for us to be creating. So, yeah, we had a good talk last night. We do that every Wednesday night. If you're interested in joining that conversation, you can sign up on patreon.com slash Sarah Giese. Okay, continuing, continuing. If I have gone too fast and you're still catching up, just feel free to pause this and get started back in when you're ready. If I've gone too slow for you and I've been talking too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can always just um, get some tea or something. Do it relaxed. We have time. Although I have noticed that even though we don't have a lot of schedule going on, I can I can fill my day pretty well. And by the end of the day, I'm like, where did it go? Like, where did the time go? I could have been much more, I don't know, uh, productive than I was. I don't know. Anyway, so we've got our first layer down. Like I said, some of these you can see in here, they have gotten a little bit fuzzy. We'll go back in once it dries and make them nice and straight and stark. But for now, we'll leave it at that. We'll go back in for our second layer of brown and let that get, dry, get darker. So I'm gonna go in with my brown, darker down in the creases. And as we go up, you can kind of follow one of the lines here just to show that it's got a little bit of a I don't know, pattern that's going on there. Yep, darker in the creases and then lighter as we go up. We'll just add some water to that top part so that it kind of blends in. I was talking with a friend last night on, on text. She's been painting along with us and she also was talking about this, um, this group called the Cageless Birds, which if you look them up, it's a really cool like ministry kind of a thing. And they have some videos about um, some journaling with art, um, 
some more meditative kind of practices, which, like you've, if you've heard me talk at all, which is what this painting thing has been for me throughout the years, has been definitely um, a meditation, a place where I, it's a spiritual practice for me to calm my mind and my heart and to be listening. Um, sometimes when your body is busy doing something, you're the, the monkey brain, they call it, or, <laughs> you know, that, that brain, the brain that's thinking about all the little worries and details is occupied with the painting or with, you know, whatever little thing it happens when I'm cleaning sometimes too, where it's kind of, you know, you're using your brain, but it's kind of a, a mindless thing. And then the background can be calm. And I, and that's when I can, can really truly listen for the spirit. And, um, anyway, so she was talking about this cageless birds thing. You look them up online. Um, it's very cool. And it made me think of, um, some things that I've done with some friends, um, where we would do, use the arts at conferences and we had stations set up where people could do clay and do different kinds of painting and art um, as, as an exploration of their creativity and um, listening to the spirit. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do something like that in these next few weeks as well. Aside from these little, these little painting sessions, I think the, the heart of where I, where I really come from is, is more in that direction. And so look for that, look out for those, those videos. I'm thinking I might go, go a little bit deeper that way and more of a meditative kind of a, a video. Okay. I'm going to go in over here with a little bit of Brown. This one is not, this is kind of a baby bud of this, of this flower. So it doesn't have as much definition or color. So I'm just going to let put a little light brown um, layer on here. And then we'll go in with the red on the tips as well of this one. Okay. So going in with the same red, but I'm not going to go all the way down, just putting it on the tips of these, this flower here, just on the tip. like that just to define those tips there Just like that, these little guys, these are the lightest of little touches, just very light brush strokes, nothing. Nothing real bold. Not a lot of water, so we're just controlling that, those lines, okay? And I will go in with a little bit of water, not too much, and just pull some of the color down into the bottom, into the rest of the, that bud. do the stem. The stem is pretty straightforward. I'm going to have it be brown and then you'll notice that along the edge that's underneath it's going to have a shadow, right? So that's darker down here 
darker along this side of this little baby one, lighter along the outside edge. That way we know that it's rounded and the light is coming from this direction, okay? It might even just be coming from the bottom, but these are underneath, right? So, so we're going in with some brown. I'm gonna put the dark brown along that outside edge there. And these are kind of thorny, real, kind of like the, the sunflower one it looked like on the pictures anyway. Kind of a thorny kind of a stalk that's nice and thick. Okay, so the darker brown along that outside edge and then, I mean the bottom edge and this one here too. Now this little area, let's define it as well. It kind of, that's where this branch uh, joins with this branch. So just put a little bit of a line there to delineate that. But we wanna make sure that we have that darkness along that edge there. Okay, now we'll just go in with water and pull that color over. So it's nice and natural looking. All blended over there. Okay, and don't forget those little spikes. <laughs> little thorns poking out. Okay. We're gonna not paint over that little vine, little raspberry vine we've got there. We'll leave that for later. So jump over it. You stream on Friday, right? Say what? You stream on Friday, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow we're gonna do um, a tulip. Tulips are my favorite. I don't know why, I've always loved them. Just like the simplicity of them. I say that, but then I also love an orchid, which is opposite of simple. So I don't know, <laughs> there's a beauty in both. I like orchids because they last so long too. I just, in the last couple years, have gotten my orchids to come back after they die, and then the next year they come back. It's kind of fun. Okay, so we've got our um, stalk done there. Let's go up into these leaves. You've noticed that I have, these leaves are brown and green. So I'm gonna bring this brown up into this whole leaf here and up in this shadow part of this leaf here. That part is green because of the sun is shining on it, but the shadowy part will be just mostly brown as well. So I'll just bring this brown that's already on the stalk, just bring it up into the leaf and cover that leaf with brown. Let the water flow around. You don't want it to look like a a marker color crayon kind of look okay and then this one as well this one's got brown as well underneath and we'll put some green on the top there all right All right, and like our friend said, don't worry, it's not done until it's done. Don't be worried how it looks right now, okay? Don't be worried. Life, it's like all of life. Things aren't gonna look done until they're done, and then they're done, right? 
It ain't done till it's done. It ain't over till it's over, till the fat lady sings, right? That's what my dad used to say. Maybe that's not really appropriate. <laughs> oh, I think he was talking about opera, right? I think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have a little brown on my brush, so I'm going in and moving the, putting a little brown down underneath here. So it would be more shadowy on the bottom of this little guy. So just bringing some shadow in there. Might as well, since I have it on my brush anyway. Okay. All right. Let's move on and just do some of these leaves here. You'll notice I have them half green, half brown. So we've got brown on the little, little spots and green on the bigger spots. So really, truly, you can do whatever you want. You can have them be bright green. You can have two greens going on. I just chose to use brown and green. That's it's your prerogative. There's no right or wrong way. On the pictures, I did notice they looked like uh, kind of a drier kind of a leaf. Like, like we said, these, these um, proteas grow in droughts and are very drought hardy. So I think that's why their leaves probably aren't the big green leaves because they don't use a lot of water up. So a little bit of brown. I'll go in with a lot of water and just put some brown in the middle here. And as I add the green, I'll just mix the green and brown together with lots of, lots of water. Now that we have this set up in here with all the cameras and lights and stuff, um, my boys were thinking about, my 12 year old was thinking about making um, some videos for YouTube. Cause he does a lot of perler beads. Have you done those perler beads where they, you melt them and they make pictures. So he was thinking, what if we did like a, a time lapse, yeah. So it's kind of fun to see their, their imaginations start going, oh, I could do something. What could I share? I love it. I love it. Okay, turning my paper. I'm going to continue with the leaves. Again, just brown and green is what I'm doing. It's like you do whatever. Speaking of sharing the things that we, we have to give, we were talking last night in our little book group about, you know, we all have different things that we feel good at, you know, and that we feel we've spent time working on, you know, and things we can share. And, you know, one of the ladies is like a, she's like a computer lady. She's just like really smart that way. She's, um, She's got a linear thought, thought process and knows how to do marketing strategies and um, she's coded before, you know, she's like that kind of a person. And um, another one is a writer. She, she writes beautifully and um, there's just a lot of fear that comes in when you realize, okay, so I'm made, I, I've made these things, I'm good at this stuff, but putting it out there into the world is inviting all kinds of people's opinions <laughs> about it, you know? And um, yeah, we were, we were commiserating about that a little bit. Um, now painting is something that I feel like this isn't, it doesn't feel that way to me as much, but music does feel that way. And I've done music a lot longer than I've painted. 
Um, but, you know, there's just different, um, different feelings that come along with different, different expressions. So I have a girlfriend that I've known for a long time. We were in a band and a music group together in the 90s, back in the day. <laughs> I know, JP's, my son is back there. He's like, oh, that's olden days. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I feel like you guys are making fun of us. Oh, no uh, way. Before I stop. Huh? There's a question. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Morin says, uh, are you painting on Good Friday, which is tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to paint tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Same since time? We're, same time. Yeah, since we're all still home. Um, yeah, I just decided we'll just continue painting. And I'm going to do tulips. Maybe I could have done a more Easter-y thing, but yeah, I'm going to do that. Hi, Jen. <laughs> anyway, so my girlfriend, who we were in that group together, she was texting about a painting, and and we decided that maybe we'll do like a, a barter. And she said, okay, so how about if you send me some, you know, some songs that you've written, and then we can collaborate on a song, and, and then I can paint her a painting. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That sounds scary to me. <laughs> the painting's no big deal, but the the, the, sing, the songwriting, that's a whole other thing that I haven't, I have a whole book full of them, but I haven't put them out there. I haven't let anybody see them. So I understand that feeling is what I'm saying. I understand that feeling of like, mm, I'm just learning this stuff and I'm not sure or I just don't feel comfortable sharing. I understand it. I really do. But how much more beautiful is it when you have, when you do write a song and it makes somebody feel something or you make a painting and people are blessed by that. You know, like, oh, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It makes me feel... Even if it's not even a symbolic thing, it's just like there's beauty in the world. Like that is worthwhile. It's worthwhile. So I'm going to be brave. And I sent her some of my songs. So we'll see. That's not to say I'm going to share them with you. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Okay, continuing around the painting, the last green spot I need to put on is this little guy. Let the water just flow around, let the paint flow as it will. It's an exercise in allowing the things that we cannot control and not letting it steal our peace, not letting it steal our joy. Okay. Okay, now I have a little bit of green down in here as well. Just, I always like to have multiple colors going on at once if you've ever, if you've noticed. <laughs> I always think it's better and more realistic that there's more than one Crayola color in, in, the, in the bark of a tree or the stem of a flower. 
Okay. Allowing that in to dry. Okay. Now we're at the point where it's kind of looking like something, but it's not quite done, right? No judgment, no judging, no judging, no judging. Okay, we're gonna go in with our, these flowers here, and we're gonna put some green. And brown. Shirley Craver says, yes, be brave and share the music. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have even said it as I was saying it. I was thinking, why am I saying this? <laughs> oh, Shirley, you're calling me out on it. You're calling me out. Now I think you're kind of obligated to do that. <laughs> I don't think you have a choice. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> I'll make sure it happens. <laughs> JP. I will make sure you do it. John Parker. He will probably hold me to it, too. Well, it just depends on what she's... I'm going to be collaborating with my girlfriend, so, you know. She's over in Oregon, I think. Yeah, Oregon. Okay. So I have my green layer there. I'm going to add in brown to it. So on these... Raspberry, oops, I didn't get this one. On these raspberries, they have real spiky, um, jaggedy looking leaves. Um, so I'm gonna go in with some brown to um, highlight that, okay? I'm gonna add brown to my little, little tiny brush and I'm gonna go in and outline each of those little, um, spiky leaves like that. See that? You want to show, highlight the beauty of this kind of leaf. It's different from those smooth ones. Just allow that to seep in. Don't, too, not too many brush strokes so that it doesn't all turn brown. I'm gonna have some of the green showing through, which I'm not doing a great job of at the moment. Okay, continuing here. This one's kind of overlapping. There we go. And I would say at the point of connection with this tree here, there would be a shadow, so I'm just allowing it to be the darkest down in there. Okay. Continuing over here. Okay, so we've got a brown outlining those, those raspberry leaves and letting the water just seep around a little bit. I'm going fast and I've allowed that whole leaf to turn brown. Oh well, we're gonna let that, let that sit and see what happens with the water. Okay. Yep might meld into something cool. Okay. Um, let's see here. 
Let's add, let's, let's color in these raspberries. I'm using a, like a bright red color. I'm using my tiny brush again. I'm going to go around and I'm leaving a white spot in the middle of each raspberry because they have a little bit of a, a shine to them. So just al allow a little part of white to show through. They've got a lot of detail. This is very detailed work. If you don't have a tiny brush and you wanted to use just a marker or some kind of a paint pen, you could do that. Or use a, a larger brush that has a tiny, you know, a, a pointy edge to it. Okay, JP, thank you for your service, bud. Took care of us well. He's mo he's gonna go. Huh? Okay, continuing on down into these raspberries. Now I added raspberries here because I noticed um, a lot of times the pictures of these protea flowers um, are, they were in um, flower arrangements. So there were thistles, there were all kinds of different kinds of flowers um, with these protea flowers. And I thought, you know, we're going to simplify, but I liked the look of those raspberries. So if you wanted to make this painting a little even more original or interesting, you could add all kinds of flowers all around. Um, you could add fruit, you could add um, thistles, all kinds of things. Don't feel like you need to rush. I'm kind of going fast because I know that we're getting to the point where we've been working for an hour and I need to go a little bit faster, but you have time at home, so don't worry about that. You can stop and start the video as much as you want to and get that detail in so you're happy with it, right? No need to rush. That's the cool thing about painting. You can just take your time, move that paint around until you feel satisfied with how it looks. Sometimes I'll just, I'll paint over paintings <laughs> multiple times because I, until I can get them right. It's easier to paint over acrylic paintings, but, um, okay. In the middle of this little guy here, we have black little dots. I think they're maybe stamen or some kind of little seed of some kind. So we're going to go in with black and just put some dots in there. All right, and then I did use black for these raspberry vines. So while we have a, while we have black on our brush, we might as well go in and make these raspberry vines. Now be be aware of where the vine is coming up and over the other branch, and then going back behind, right? So that'll give more the look of the 3D. The 3D branch as well. Right. 
Let's do these little berries up here and then we'll go in and do some touch-ups along around the flower and we'll be set, okay? These little berries, I think it would be cool to have even more of them, but for now, I just put two of them. Let's put the stem in. Now, you'll notice that I have circles along, along the stem that could either be in front or behind. So I just am choosing to put these in front and those behind, you choose, okay? It's your choice. I'm gonna put that one behind and these in front. It's so just the lightest of touch, just a little line like that, okay? Now, you'll notice these berries I put, some purple and some blue. So I'm gonna go in with the blue first and just do kind of a half of it blue and then I'll go in and put a drop of purple to, to have the variation in color, okay? So using my small brush, again, I'll go in with the blue, again, that I had in, in here, but now we're gonna have it be potent. We're not watering it down as much. And I'm going in and painting half of the berries Just randomly. Do half with a jaggedy edge. We don't want to have a, a straight line, but adding a little color on one side and then the other. Now purple. Go in with a purple color and do the other half. Just dropping that in. No need to be super precise, just going around in the circle and making the other half of the berry, that berry. Like I said, do these all over the place if you want to. They're so cute and pretty. Let that dry. Okay, so at this point in the painting, um, we are we are basically just we have our our first layer of everything down. Um, if you're happy with it, it, it can be done at this point. Okay. If you want to do a lot, you could do all kinds of things detail-wise, like we talked about putting more lines in this area. Um, the only thing that I feel like I'm going to do right now is co go in and do a little bit touch up on these pokey little petals, um, like we talked about earlier. When we put the water on, they got a little bit uh, uh, wet, uh, wet, you know, and pulled the lines to, to be more wiggly. So, sorry, I've got people coming in and out, so I'm losing my train of thought, but pull, pull that red down into the middle. This line is the one that kind of got, went away <laughs> when we pulled the water in. So just going back in and making that line a little more crisp. Okay, and you could also go in. On mine, I used a dark brown and did the tips in dark brown just to show that they are kind of a spiky, spiky look. See like this, really makes it much more of a, a defined spike there. So really, I'm, I'm gonna let you do what you need to do to make this painting exactly how you want it. 
if you want to want to put more color in these these uh, petals you can do that if you want to put more color in there you could you know follow those lines a little bit okay those are the things we can be doing now at the end so as we finish up, I want to thank you for your, um, your patience with us, with our technical difficulties. I hope you were able to um, catch up if you, were, if you are not on the live and you're watching back. I'm sorry that the beginning got cut off. <laughs> but you know what? Such is life. Things happen and you just you have to run with them, you know? You just got to go with the flow. All right. This one I would, I would put more, a little bit more de definition as well. But now that time is, the time has come, I'm going to allow you guys to do what you need to do there. Okay. Have fun finishing your painting and making it perfectly defined the way you like it. I know that you are creative. You have creativity in you and beauty in you to share with the world. And I'm thankful that we got to do it together. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, like I said, and we'll be doing um, a tulip. And um, we'll kick off the Easter weekend with a pretty thing that reminds us of